Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to uh, our next session on the subject of faith. Uh, faith is always uh, one of the most interesting subjects because it is a foundation of our Christian walk and life. Okay, so let's begin with a word of prayer. Um, okay, let me pray today. Yeah, sure. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. Lord, we thank you for the truth of your word. Lord, we believe that you are building us up, O oh God. Uh, Lord, uh, each word at a time, Father God, line upon line and precept upon precept, Lord, we pray that our faith will be built uh, on the solid rock of your word, O oh God. And Father God, strengthen us and help us to uh, stand established for the purposes of your kingdom. Uh, Father, we speak blessings upon each and every student. Um, and Father, we pray that this time will be a great time of, uh, Lord, just being refreshed in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. So let's um, begin with a little bit of recap. So what did we learn in the last class? Uh, if you remember some parts of what we had learned, you can share. We talked about faith. Okay. And we said that, uh, which is the scripture that we read to understand the concept of faith? Hebrews 11 and verse 1. And in Hebrews 11 and verse 1, we saw that faith is like the... Uh, sense or the sixth sense that we have in our spiritual being which tells us of things which are going to come. So uh, based on God's promises there are some things which are going to take place or some promises that we are going to receive. That is in the future. But where is faith? Faith is now. Now faith is. So now we carry faith in our hearts about things which are going to happen. Okay. So that is what we saw in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. And we also saw that faith is, um, it's a conviction or an assurance, meaning it's a, uh, it's a strong sense that what God has promised will take place. So we carry a strong sense in our heart, even if we don't see many things um, aligning to what the word says, we hope and trust that it is going to take place. So today we have an assurance or a conviction about something that will only happen later. Okay, So that is how we understood faith. And uh, we also touched upon uh, different aspects and said that, you know, believing is something that we have to do. Believing is something that we have to do. Faith is something that we carry. And uh, we said that faith is what connects us to God. Faith pleases God. So if we want to make God happy, what should we do? The Bible says, faith pleases God. So when he sees our hearts and there is faith in our hearts, that will make God happy. But what is the opposite? What if we carry unbelief? It will displease God, isn't it? If faith pleases God, unbelief will displease God. So the point is that in my heart, uh, I should have faith. I should not have unbelief. So I have to do everything possible to carry faith in my being okay and faith is what connects us to god and we saw how um, you know faith should be in the lord jesus christ and uh, not used as a principle you know, sometimes we can just use a principle or a law and i told us last time we could say that you know if you pray like this you will get an answer or if you believe like this you will get an answer that's the principle or that's the law. If you throw uh, an apple from the roof, it will fall down. That's the law. That's how it works. But faith is more than a principle or a law. It depends. We must uh, anchor our faith in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
meaning we should not use it independently somewhere you know we could say that okay i will use faith but we don't strengthen our personal relationship with god so when we do that there's a problem because faith must be rooted in who jesus christ is okay uh, and then we looked at you know uh, many other things we said that it is based on relationship so relationship is important in faith uh, we can't say that i'm going to be a very strong believer i will carry strong faith but what if i don't pray i don't worship i don't have my daily communion with god but i'm a woman of faith is that possible for some time the principles of god's word may work in my life right so that's a danger so i may be operating in faith but if i miss my relationship with god sooner or later everything will crash so we have to remember that faith must be based on our relationship with god so that is where the strength comes in okay and then uh, we said that faith is of the heart meaning you remember i said in the heart you know faith is like a seed it is there in the heart it grows in the heart now why are we making a distinction or talking about the difference between the heart and the mind because in the mind we may have questions we may have doubts but because faith is of the heart even when we have doubts and questions in the mind in the heart we can believe do you understand so that is the importance faith is of the heart and we can um, keep it in the heart we can nurture it we can grow faith in our hearts so faith is of the heart and god calls us to live by faith every moment we need to live by faith okay uh, and there are so many stories amazing stories i uh, would encourage you to read some of the stories of you know men and women of god who have walked by faith uh, and as we go through this course hopefully you know i'll share a couple of stories so maybe i'll um, uh, start from page 9 here i'm kind of restarting from here i know we have already uh, seen these sections but for us to become strong in what we are learning uh, you may have heard about uh, george um, muller or george muller as he's known uh, he was somebody who decided to take care of uh, children so running a home for the children was not easy right but to serve god he decided that he is going to um, take care of children so he was a person who did not want to ask for money from anyone so you can imagine every meal to provide for the children was very difficult for him so when you read his life story there is one incident where there was no money and no food and it was time to feed people in the home and uh, george and his wife they were like what do we do everyone's hungry we have to provide food but at that time what they did they just prayed and they said lord you are the provider and you are the one who has called us to do this ministry so we are going to trust you we are going to um, you know believe that you will provide so they prayed so when they prayed what happened um, the uh, incident goes something like there was a food van there was a food van uh, in the van they were carrying a lot of meals okay and uh, something happened to the van in front of you know george muller's place so some breakdown something happened so the vehicle just stopped now the driver didn't know what to do because it's a big vehicle you cannot move it forward and then you know he finally decided okay all the food will go waste so we can just give it off to somebody who's close by and he goes to um, um, you know a home nearby and he finds uh, george muller and the family and he says hey can you all take this food and uh, use it because i can't use it the vehicle is not moving can you imagine okay it's unusual to think that something like this can happen when people carry faith in their hearts so this was one man who did the ministry of serving people and uh, he carried faith in his heart 
and we know this is just one story but there are so many such stories when people have believed god amazing things have taken place right even today when we believe god the impossible can take place but what does god need what is god looking for what is he looking for in the heart faith if there is faith so much can happen okay so um i can keep sharing story after story of different people smith wigglesworth is another man of god you can read about his life uh, he was not so uh, you know um learned he was a plumber uh, and his english was not good he was uh, you know he was not able to preach in great english uh, in his times so there were a lot of challenges but one thing about smith wigglesworth was he was a man of faith okay in incredible faith to the point that it is said um that he is one of those people in whose ministry um a good number of dead people came back to life so there are so many stories that you can read even one particular story when uh, he was praying for a child and uh, uh something like when he was praying for the child the child died in his lap but he didn't give up he said no he began to speak the word of god and he began to say no you know i speak life over this child this child will live can you imagine what kind of faith you know people men and women have carried in their hearts and that's what we are talking about when you have faith that's what god wants when god told moses you go to the promised land you cross the red sea moses could have asked the question how is it possible how can the red sea part but he believed so god is looking for a man god is looking for a woman um to believe when we believe god can do mighty things think about uh, mary the mother of jesus the angel comes to her and says you know you are going to uh, bear a son and uh, you must name him jesus uh, she is amazed she says how can this be you know i'm still a virgin how can this be and the answer is by the power of the holy spirit but what was important she believed god can do something incredible through the lives of those who believe if we believe right god can work miracles through our lives that's the way even in the life of mary god could have picked anyone somebody great he could have picked she was an ordinary girl young girl you know not yet married she doesn't know how to raise children but god called her and said through you the son of god will be birthed the lord jesus but one thing that made it possible for all these people that i'm talking about you know to to really see the promise of god fulfilled in their lives was faith imagine any one of them if they said i'm sorry this is i can't believe this how can this happen god would not be able to work through them he would have had to find somebody else he would have searched till he found someone one person who believes if we believe when we carry faith in our hearts you know faith will move mountains so this is what faith is faith is the assurance it's the conviction it's the substance as hebrews 11 says it's a substance of things hoped for uh, the things unseen right like the things that we have not seen they are going to come but today what is it we carry a substance that is what faith is so um every time we need to look into our hearts and see every day you know we check our um, um you know we are also used to our phones right phones battery we check okay 50% 60% 90% uh, we are happy if it's if 100% or oh, great you know i i can i'm connected okay we check our fuel tank when we ride a bike or a car how much how much of petrol is there but how about our faith where is my faith what is my indicator saying you know what is the level of my faith that's what god is looking for so uh, as we learn about faith one thing that we must be encouraged to do is to build ourselves up build our faith up to always keep it strong to always keep it high okay now 
Um, let's read Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. Romans 10 and verse 17, please. Uh, can somebody go ahead and read it aloud? Let him read and then yes. he wants to. Okay, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. It is there in the notes also. Yeah, I think we can hear you. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I've been talking about keeping our faith at a high level, right? So increase your faith, increase our faith. How will it come? It has to come from somewhere if we have to increase it. So what did uh, just now, you know, what was read to us, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if I want my faith to increase, what should I do? Hear the word of God. So what are we all doing now? So do you think there will be faith put into your heart, your spirit? Yes or no? Yes, yes. So as we hear the word of God, what is happening? Whether we recognize or not, faith is rising in our hearts. Okay, so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So every day, you know, we need to make time, read what the Bible, you know, has. So read the Bible, um, listen to good sermons, uh, study the word of God. The way all of us are here, studying God's word together, study the word of God. So what's happening? We are making an effort to hear Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So this is the way in which we can build up our faith. So every day, what's happening? You know, the way we all started this course is we may have been in a certain status you know, of our faith levels. But as we are going through, uh, not just this course, any course that has the word of God in it, what's happening? Faith level is increasing, right? Because we are hearing the word and faith is coming by the word of God. Okay, so this is the way in which we can develop faith. Now we may say, I don't have faith. I don't have faith. Where is faith? I don't have faith to do this or I don't have faith to study. I don't have faith to clear my course. Don't worry, you can get faith. Even if we don't have faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what can I do? I can take scriptures that tell me about how God has promised me, you know, to build me up in the knowledge of God. I can take scriptures that talk about the, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit empowering me in understanding and wisdom. So when I start to meditate on these scriptures, what happens? Faith starts to rise up for me to study or do my course or, you know, I whatever I want to do, isn't it? So in this way, uh, it's totally up to us to build our faith to receive from God. So faith will come as long as we are spending time in God's word. Okay, okay, fine. Are you all understanding? I'm just breaking it down so that we can use it. Okay, fine, great. Let's move on. Um, the next thing that I want to share for us is faith in the word is faith in God. So when you think about the time when there was a centurion okay, who came to Jesus uh, because his servant was not well. Do you remember M Matthew chapter 8? Okay, there was a centurion. His servant is not well and the servant was not with the centurion. 
Okay, so then what happens? Um, you know, uh, Jesus offers to kind of go to see that sick servant. But the centurion tells Jesus, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. Then it says, uh, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. So what is happening here? Jesus wants to go and see the servant. Okay, But the centurion says, No, Lord, you only say a word and my servant will be healed. So Jesus is amazed in a good way. He's so happy. Why? Tell me why. Because of his faith. Okay. Well, this faith is a great faith. Yes or no? Because this faith is saying, even if you don't come, if you speak one word, it's enough. That is powerful. It will do the work which it is meant to do. And that is why Jesus is amazed. Because one more thing that you understand here is the word is the person. You understood? So when Jesus says something, even when he's not there, his word is him. Understood? So even today, when we take a word of God, he is not here physically. Where is Jesus now? He is in heaven. But his word, it's as if he's there. When we put our faith in the words of Jesus, behold, I will be with you even to the end of the age. He's not there speaking it into my ears with sound, but his word is him. Did you get it? Yeah. So that is the faith. That is the faith that the centurion carried. He said, Lord, he didn't even say, okay, give me a book, Lord. You know, write all your uh, you know, spiritual blessings and give one book or give me a passage. One word. Just speak the word and my servant will be healed. So he understood the power of the word of Jesus. So even today, we must understand that the word is Jesus. So the word is not just, you know, like when we read the Bible, sometimes you know, people use all these quotes. They say, um, like when you read the Bible, right? When you read the Bible, the Bible reads you. Okay, you got it. When you read the Bible, what happens? The Bible reads you. So when you read any other book, you are just reading the book. But when you read the Bible, the Bible begins to engage. Why? Because, you know, Hebrews, um, um, what is, I think 14 verse 12, uh, it says that the word of God, 4 verse 12 says that the word of God is living and active. It's alive. Every word that we read, it is alive. Just the way the centurion understood. Right? God, Lord, only one word. If you say one word, it's enough. My servant will be healed. Because he carried faith in the word that the faith, the word is the person. Okay? So there is an active believing in what God is saying in the word of God. This is the way in which we must engage with the word of God or the Bible. Right? If we just read the Bible like a book, yeah, every lot of people do that. Scientists do that. Historians do that. You know, ar archaeologists do that. They read. Maybe they have read the Bible many times. But what is the difference in what I'm saying right now? What is that one element that we need in our hearts when we um, engage with the Word of God? What is it? Huh? Faith. Correct. So you don't read it without faith. If you read it without faith, it doesn't amount to much. But when you read it with faith, then the way the centurion saw the miracle, 
in the same way miracles will take place because the word is him okay now let's move on faith is like a muscle it grows as it is exercised so the bible teaches us in romans 12:3 um it says god has dealt to each one a measure of faith god has dealt to each one a measure of faith now those of us who are good at cooking okay we know uh, how we measure things the way you may measure a uh, flour to make you know chapatis or bread or the way you measure some spices to put it in a salt we usually say pinch of salt that's a measure little bit of salt right or a teaspoon of salt the bible is saying god has given us a measure of faith now this measure need not remain at the same level so i said pinch of salt i can have more than a pinch of salt if i want i can have salt um a spoon of salt or i can have um you know we have those uh, salt shakers on the table pepper salt so i can put it in one of those i can have that much of salt or i can have a full jar of salt right so the measure of how much i have salt can vary now when the bible says that we've been given a measure of faith we have a measure of faith another thing that the bible says in second corinthians 1 and verse 3 is faith grows exceedingly faith grows exceedingly okay so that gives us the understanding if i start with a pinch you know how jesus said mustard seed do you have mustard seed all cooking cooking language okay mustard seed level of faith that's enough you can move the mountain but you find in second thessalonians 13 you don't have to remain as mustard seed your faith can grow faith can increase okay faith can become bigger so we can um trust god to help us increase our faith whether i want to live um you know a um, a life that glorifies god maybe i don't have faith for it but can i grow in my faith yes i can grow in my faith and i can develop myself right for ministry maybe god has called me to teach god's word right and i don't have faith i feel like oh god i can't do this it's too difficult for me but can i grow can i grow i can grow i can grow in my faith for my ministry and say god increase my faith i will increase in my faith i will learn i will pray you know i will spend time in god's presence what happens we change right we change because what's happening to our faith faith grows exceedingly it can grow that's what the bible is telling us we may start with a measure but faith can grow now how to make it grow is the question can anybody here into exercise and fitness yes no maybe the heads are shaking all over the place so i don't know if it's a yes or a no uh let me see what's here on the chat okay there are some comments thank you everyone no questions yet okay so i was saying uh fitness now okay some of you who said yes right so how will you grow your muscles how will you make your muscles stronger sleep sleep every day 8 to 10 hours just sleep get up your muscles will become so strong am i right are you sure okay so you seem quite sure um okay somebody here says uh, shubho says exercise so when we exercise what happens to our muscles they become stronger right so maybe in the beginning you start to work out and you take 
maybe you know like one kg weight and you just try to do your, that's already hard enough you're struggling you're sweating right you want to drink a glass of water immediately because it's already not strong your muscles but if you keep it up every week little bit little 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 at one point you may be doing 3 kgs right you and you you don't feel it what happened what happened i can't hear you <laughs> so yeah what happened you became strong yeah the, so the muscles became strong the same muscles they were very weak but over time as you exercised it became stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger this is the way in which we can grow our faith let's say you know i'm so scared to pray for somebody because i feel oh what god may not answer or you know um i what will they think about me or i'm not able to speak in the right language but we have to exercise right so if you don't take that step what happens it's like sleeping your muscle will never grow it will never grow but if you step in and take a chance right you go you're so scared but still you say brother you have any prayer request i'll pray for you you're already shivering right your knees are knocking and you're sweating you're like so scared oh my goodness i have to do this but that's the best way what are you doing exercise you're pushing yourself it will feel so painful it will feel so uncomfortable but as you do it first time maybe the person says i was so blessed i felt the peace of god when you prayed for me something right that encourages you next time you go to another person again you're scared but little better right little better this time so you go you pray a second time in the same way you keep praying 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 what will happen yeah you've exercised your faith so when suddenly there is a need okay you suddenly see somebody is sick you go straight away you're not scared anymore because you have exercised your faith in prayer and you say god will hear me i will pray in the name of jesus right i command the sickness to leave so this is the way in which we have to step in and exercise your faith exercise my faith and faith will increase and when faith increases if mustard seed faith we can do mighty things for god with great faith so much can be done for god and that's what god wants he wants all of us to carry uh, a lot of faith in our hearts right so uh, don't ever think i don't have anything do you have faith in your heart yes that's what god wants we can start with faith if you have faith in your heart you know mighty things can be done through each one of our lives okay so faith make it grow with the word of god and faith will also grow with god's word and there are many factors that affect our faith um so what are those factors those factors are uh, in in the section on page 11 it says that faith works through love okay faith works through love meaning the reason why i exercise my faith should be based in love so imagine you know somebody is not well or uh, you find that um, there is a person who is caught in all kinds of addictions okay now when we look at these people some sick person we may say oh so sad they are sick okay leave it now we may find somebody who may have certain issues right behavioral issues addictions we may look at them and say oh so sad but you know there's no hope for this person and leave it but how did jesus respond how did jesus respond what does the bible say he was moved with he was moved with i can't hear you compassion right he was moved with 
compassion and compassion of jesus was the reason why he healed not that they deserved it or we deserve it no right god is so gracious it's not about us deserving anything but he loves us so much that because of his compassion he healed he delivered he did miracles in people's lives even today for us we may say oh i have a lot of faith no i have a lot of faith but where is that compassion why did god give us that faith so that we can use it with love and compassion so when i pray for someone what is the meaning of that i care right there is underlying love in that god's love i want god's love to be poured out on another person's life that's why i'm praying uh why am i you know prophesying to somebody because of love god's love god's word of encouragement should be spoken into that person's life so i prophesy or anything else anything that we do anything preaching why are we preaching to show that ah i can preach very well no we should have the underlying motivation god's love this will build somebody up this will build the body of christ this will build up you know god's people so yes i will do this ministry right so the underlying reason to use our faith should be what should it be competition hatred then what should it be why should we use our faith because of love okay so because of god's love which we want to show others so this is the reason that we must exercise our faith and the bible says that faith works through love without love no faith will be inactive so many of us know uh, even like a phone some of these um, this one has it is connected to power but you know the phones which uh, run by battery in put a battery uh, the cordless mic i'm saying phone mic yeah so cordless mics right so the cordless mic if you remove the battery what will happen i'll speak here i'll speak loudly what will happen you can't hear it may be the best quality cordless mic but without the battery it's useless in the same way we can carry a lot of faith but if we carry anger hatred unforgiveness bitterness you know uh, competition rebellion all that we carry in our hearts but faith faith also we have great faith but we have a bad attitude right not a godly attitude you know what our faith will not be effective because the bible says faith works through love that's the best way so what is the battery in that in that cordless mic it's love right so to make faith work or to make that uh, mic work we need love so as much as we work on faith we must also work on love okay to carry that love in our hearts then what happens faith becomes very effective there's faith there's love and we can be so effective in whatever we do so faith works by love uh, and there are uh, in second peter chapter 1 verses 5 through 8 that's another passage uh, which talks about building up our christian lives meaning to progress in our christian life you know um the way all of us we understand that children they join nursery then they go to primary they go to high school and then you know eventually they uh, graduate from school and the journey goes on in the christian life it's somewhat like that so we may say that hey i'm a believer that's just the beginning i'm a believer that's just the beginning there is so much of progress that we need to make in our christian walk keep going up so that's what um, apostle peter said in second peter 1 verses 5 through 8 uh, you know he says you need to add uh, to your giving all diligence add to your faith virtue knowledge self control so he is making a full list of 
attitudes that we need to develop as we grow up in Christ. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to go into it, but just for us to understand that when our faith needs to be effective, it will need love and it will also need many other virtues to uh, make it really thrive. Then faith causes the power of God to be released. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 11. Uh, can somebody please go ahead and read it for us? 2 Thessalonians 1 and verse 11, please. Another person? Anyone else? Okay, thank you, um, Akhil. Uh, I think because we didn't have the mic, the online audience couldn't hear it. But what this says is that what God does is that good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. So God blesses our work of faith with power. You know what the meaning of that is? It's like saying, when we take one step, God takes 10 steps. Okay, it's, it's somewhat like that. Think about Moses. What did God tell Moses when he went and stood in front of the Red Sea? Did he tell him, okay, you, you stretch the waters and you know put uh, 100 men this side, 100 men that side? What was a simple instruction? Simple instruction. Use the... Rod. Okay. Use the rod. No. Moses, you go. There will be the sea. Stretch forth. Right? You stretch forth the rod. So think about this. What did Moses need to do for the Red Sea to come apart? Only one thing. What is that one thing? Stretch. Right? Stretch the rod. So this scripture is somewhat like that. He says that God will... Add to our work of faith. Work of faith with power. So we take only one step. That is our responsibility. What did God tell us to do? You go pray for that person. What is God's work? God will heal. God may tell us to do. Okay, you go. You sing that song. What will God do? He will bring his presence. Right? God will work through the anointing. God may say, God told Abraham, Abraham, come out. You go. And the Bible says, by faith, Abraham went. He didn't even know where he was going. He was thinking, oh, goodness, what is going to happen? You know, uh, where am I going? What will happen to my life? But only one thing that he did by faith. What was that? Okay, God, you told me, pack my bags, go. I'm just going. One step. Then we know the life of Abraham. We are going to study about the life of Abraham. How he is that man of faith who has become an example for us. Only one step he took. Very bold step. God told him go. He went. That's all. But when we take that one step, the Bible tells us God will um, give his power to it. Right? So the mighty work God will do. But what does he want us to do? One step. What is he asking us to do? That one step may seem very small. But by faith, we need to take that one step. Okay, and then God will bless it. Uh, he will give his power. The work of faith with power. He fulfills and completes our work of faith with power. Okay, So uh, these are things for us to remember. All right. So um, I, I know this is a pretty detailed recap, but I think it's necessary so that we really gain uh, a good knowledge about what faith is. Now, we can move on to uh, chapter 2 here, which talks about God's sovereignty, grace, and faith. So what is this term, sovereignty? Okay, sovereignty. Um, it simply means that God is all-powerful and everything is in his control. He does not need us to help him. Okay, so that is what sovereignty means. So whatever happens, right, um, 
if you look at God's sovereignty, um, okay, I'll put it in a different way. No one can stop God. Okay, so that is how you understand God's sovereignty. So we'll talk a little bit more about the uh, dynamics of God's sovereignty as well as faith. Now, if God is somebody whom we cannot stop or whom we cannot change, right? How, how is it that my faith is needed? God can do whatever he wants to do. Why does he need my faith? Right? So that's the question we all battle with. Uh, but we will look at what the Bible has to say about God's sovereignty as well as our faith. So talking about God's sovereignty, the Bible is very clear that God is almighty. In jo Job 42 verse 2, it says, I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. Okay, so Job, uh, in, in that passage, he, you see that God is being affirmed as a great God. Whatever he wants to do, he can do because he is God, right? So God is so great. And we also notice that God is very gracious. Gracious means that, you know, God, um, he loves to have compassion. He loves to show his mercy. So the scriptures tell us in Psalm 86 verses 15 that God is full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in mercy and truth. Okay, So our God is sovereign, all-powerful and gracious. So then we can let God do whatever he wants to do, isn't it? Because he's already good. So for us to think that if God is all powerful, everything will be done by God and I don't need to work on my faith, now that would be a wrong posture. Okay? Uh, so what we'll do is, uh, I think it's better we just take a break and come back so that we can get into explaining this uh, at a stretch. So uh, let's go in for a break. We'll be back in 10 minutes. Yeah, so 10 o'clock, we will start our next session and talk about the dynamics of God's sovereignty and faith. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, everyone.